Yeah is Australia's education service on AIDS with a strategic focus on young people. Essentially that means making sure that young Australians know what AIDS is and believe they can do something about it. I think by Kevin coming to Australia, he's able to put a human face to the devastation that we hear about AIDS orphans, people, young people that have lost the opportunity to grow up in supportive um, home environments because of the impact and devastation of AIDS. And Kevin is a story about life. Kevin has survived that ordeal and can share with people um, you know, in a really personal way what it's been like to go through that in a way that that you just can't get from just reading about it or, um, you know, it's that first-hand sort of connection. AIDS has so many repercussions in our world and it has repercussions in, um, it's like that ripple effect, you know, you're right, it's not just the person that contracts HIV, it doesn't stop there. Um, that ripple effect actually goes, it continues to go out um, throughout the whole community. And first of all, it starts in that sort of uh, nucleus of a family. Um, when somebody contracts HIV, you know, the next people affected by that are their loved ones and their fa family and their friends. And then beyond that, you know, you see the impacts, especially in areas where HIV has become so prevalent, you see the, the broader impacts it has on communities and um, you know it, it perpetuates issues such as poverty um, as people aren't able to work and, and you know it just sort of goes on and on and on and yet the thing that I continually struggle to understand about this is that for um, more than a decade we have had all of the information we have needed to know how to prevent this disease and yet look at the impact it's still having on every corner of this globe. Um, why do we lack the capacity to put that into action? Stigma is one of the biggest things fueling the spread of AIDS globally. Um, the misconception of, of understanding what AIDS really is. Um, it's not as easy as just saying don't do this or don't do that um, when it comes to sex or drugs or some of these issues that you know we traditionally have such a tough time talking about but they're actually real parts of our society and real parts of our world. AIDS has been around for 26 years. Roughly if you say that, that that's sort of the, the definition of youth, um, you know, people under that age bracket, they've been born into a world with AIDS yet they're not being educated about it and they're going to be left to try to respond to this issue. So what is the rest of society doing to equip young people with the knowledge and the opportunity to do something about it? On one hand, we've had the positive breakthrough of, of better treatments, enabling people to live longer lives and an improvement of, of quality of life to a degree. Having grown up in a family affected by HIV, it's not something you would wish on anybody to experience. It's not the sort of thing that you can say, oh, well, it doesn't really matter if I contract HIV, I can manage this. My connection with HIV began 19 years ago. Um, as a young girl, um, my mum was diagnosed with HIV. She'd actually had it for several years and wasn't aware, um, which was pretty common and, and still often is quite common. HIV is one of those things, you don't wake up the day after contracting it and, um, you know, sort of have this tattoo on your forehead telling you that. So often it can take several years, particularly if you're a, a healthy person to begin with, before you start to see maybe any signs or symptoms. And in my mum's case, uh, which is a common situation for women, she had actually fallen pregnant. And um, often in, in routine pregnancy tests here in Australia, doctors will ask the question, um, you know, and, and sort of and, and take a, a history and say, is there a reason we should do a HIV test? And in my mum's case, um, she discovered she was HIV positive. It was actually blurted out to me in a um, not so pleasant way um, that your mum's got AIDS, she's going to die. And given the context of the time, I actually thought that meant she would die then and there. Mum and I then went on a bit of a journey together um, to try to, to learn and figure out what it actually meant. 
um, to have HIV in 1989. And I think, you know, I, I was very fortunate to have a mum that had that type of attitude towards it and, and that's more her capacity as the person she was, um, that she was a very open sort of a person and by setting that example for me, she made me feel reassured that it was okay, that we could figure out what this was about and find out the best way to deal with it. It's like living with a ticking time bomb and by the age of 13, my mum had um, already experienced what we used to, I guess, call um, AIDS-defining illnesses. So it, it was a time when we thought, OK, this is the beginning of the end. And um, like a lot of long-term survivors, you know, mum, mum um, was sort of at that forefront. So doctors really didn't know much more than we knew back then. They were learning from these patients to see how they were responding to those early treatments and my mum managed to bounce back several times um, but towards the end of high school it was becoming pretty obvious that her body was um, unable to take the continuous sort of beating of uh, a broken immune system that left her vulnerable to everything else and she'd battled cancer that had gone into remission, um, she'd lost her eyesight, um, she'd had numerous other um, infections and although her spirit kept fighting strong, um, you know, her body was wearing out. And shortly after I finished year 12, um, mum passed away. And she'd been battling with it for 15 years. I think also what I've learnt from, you know, meeting Kevin and, you know, I've met many other people from a range of countries and cultures and different backgrounds is that, you know, it's... It's not about how someone gets HIV or, you know, where it comes from or those sorts of things. It's the fact that, you know, if you've experienced this, everyone living with HIV is in the same boat. People affected by HIV, you know, where the repercussions of, of society's inability to say, you know, AIDS is real and let's deal with it. So that's the place in which we sort of connect. But then the other side of that is how different our lives are, even though we've experienced very similar things. Um, the, the sheer fact that I grew up in sort of middle class white Australia um, versus growing up in a rural area of a country in Africa meant that I had a lot more opportunities um, in life, despite the fact that I was growing up in a family affected by AIDS. And, um, you know, people growing up in, in other areas don't. And we've got to stop letting things like our geographical boundaries, um, you know, dictate the level of opportunity a person has to life. Australia needed a service like Youth Empowerment Against HIV to take the message out there to schools, to parents and to young people themselves to raise the issue with the media and... Um, equip young people with knowledge and information so they can do something about AIDS.